If you're at someone's party and don't watch over the kids when all the other adults leave, does that make you the jerk? We'll get into that in a bit, but first, am I the jerk for telling my sister I don't feel sorry for her after her daughter moved in with her grandparents? My niece Annabelle, 15, went to live with her grandparents a few weeks ago. This was a long time coming. Annabelle has been miserable at home for years and has talked to her mom countless times and had me, my mom, and my brother talk to her mom on her behalf before. Nothing changed until Annabelle was finally done. This all started when Annabelle was four. My sister Natasha, 47, met her husband and they moved in together with his then five-year-old daughter Jasmine. Annabelle instantly adored Jasmine, which I know my sister hyped her up for them being sisters and stuff. But Jasmine from day one was very negative toward Annabelle. She would scream at Annabelle and call her names. It was normal kid acting out stuff that wasn't corrected from what we witnessed. Then over the years it just kept getting worse and it stayed a very negative relationship even after Annabelle stopped trying to be sisters or even friends with Jasmine. Jasmine was with her dad way more than her mom. Her mom, like Annabelle's dad, was a bit of a deadbeat, though at least she knew her mom, where Annabelle has never met her dad. Whenever we would see them, Jasmine would have no problem playing with other kids, even other kids in our family. But she would tell Annabelle she couldn't play or she would blame Annabelle for making her stop playing with the others. My brother's kids would come and tell us what was going on, and neither Natasha or her husband would say or do anything. My mom went over a few times to say it wasn't nice to exclude kids, and Jasmine would say she hated Annabelle and wanted her to go away. This all bled into school where Annabelle was bullied by Jasmine and some of her friends. Still, nothing was done. Natasha dismissed everyone who mentioned it to her. She would even ask Annabelle if she really wanted her to be unhappy and single again, or why couldn't she accept that some sisters won't always like you. She would ignore when Annabelle told her that Jasmine never liked her. We did our best to be supportive of Annabelle and we even tried to figure out if we could help things with her and Jasmine. It came as no surprise to me when Annabelle told us her grandparents were fighting for custody. When they won, it was surprising because I almost expected it to go in Natasha's favor since she's her mom. But the judge decided Annabelle was old enough to have a say and took everything into account. Natasha was furious with the decision and has been crying and raging ever since. Nobody has comforted her, and we've pulled back now that we no longer need to go through her to see Annabelle. This might be why she showed up at my house the other night and wanted to talk, and when I didn't let her in, she asked me why we're not there for her. I told her that I don't feel sorry for her at all, and I said it was her fault this happened. Natasha called me a bench and stormed away from my house. She sent me a text yesterday saying I should still be there for her. Am I the jerk? I really don't think Opie's the jerk here. All I can say here is that, to me, it seems like Natasha brought it on herself. Annabelle doesn't deserve to have to keep putting up with that, especially during an important time. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy getting to decide whether or not all of these people are jerks, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, am I the jerk for calling my sister-in-law a jerk for buying a more expensive baby high chair for when she babysits my baby? My husband and I, male 36, female 31, had our baby 7 months ago and now I have to go back to work soon. And on the days both my husband and I have the evening shift or same weekend shift, my husband's brother and his wife, male 40, female 42, offer to babysit. They are child free and work 9 to 5 and no weekends. Yesterday I was visiting and she showed me how she prepared their apartment with safety things and she had also purchased a baby chair, a thousand dollar baby high chair. I was appalled because the one I have is a thirty dollar one. I told her that she was the jerk for having a more expensive chair for my child at her place when I have a thirty dollar chair. She just shrugged and said that she was thinking about the rest of her interior and wanted a beautiful piece because it'll be in the kitchen for a long period of time. I was furious and left, but my husband wants me to apologize for being rude? How am I the rude one here when she obviously overtopped us with our own child? I mean, it's just a chair. I mean, yeah, it's a lot of money for a chair, but I don't understand why OP's being so upset. Are they afraid their 7 month old baby's going to be like, you know what? I want to hang out at auntie and uncle's instead of staying here, they've got a nicer high chair. Like, what's the actual problem here? Honestly, with the child care that you're getting from them, you should be thrilled that they're going out of their way to buy something so expensive to watch your kid. You should be thanking them for even considering spending that much on your kid. 
Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my mother-in-law to stay out of things that don't freaking concern her? My husband and I took some time out from his mom last year because she was interfering into my personal business that had no impact on her whatsoever. The gist of what happened is, I was contacted by some biological family members of mine, my late father's parents and two of his siblings. They had reached out to say they regretted letting me and my younger sister go into foster care when we were six and two after our parents died. My sister died in foster care and then I was left totally alone with no family. So having these people reach out now that I'm 29 and haven't seen them in over two decades, it ticked me off. The reason for them not taking me is I was my father's affair baby. He was married with kids when he and my mom started an affair and his marriage to his ex-wife only came to an end when my mom was six months pregnant with me. The fallout meant that my father was hated, understandably, but so was I and so was my sister when she was born. I have very vague memories of his older children and none of them are pleasant. My father's parents and siblings all sided with his ex-wife and the children once my parents died and decided foster care was the only place for us since we had nobody on our maternal side. My mother was a foster kid herself. I saw my grandparents and aunts and uncles at my sister's funeral but she was buried by the state since none of them claimed her body and I was just a child myself so I couldn't. I had no desire to welcome them into my life or to forgive them and form a relationship. My mother-in-law started making comments that I should give them a chance or I'll regret it. She said, how am I ever supposed to know my siblings if I don't make the effort? My husband told her to stop. I even told her my siblings weren't part of the group who reached out and from the limited info I heard, they have no interest in establishing anything with me and it sounds like they feel like I should have died with my sister. Mother-in-law said it didn't mean I shouldn't try and then she wanted to know their names so she could talk to them. After her not letting up despite my husband telling her multiple times, we decided to take that break from her. Then a little over a week ago, she showed up and told me she found them on Facebook and was waiting for them to accept a message so she could talk to them and fix things for me. I lost my temper and told her to stay out of things that don't freaking concern her. She told me not to curse and she was trying to help. My husband was furious with his mom when he got home. They argued and then his brother got involved and basically said I should have just shut the door in her face and let my husband deal with her. So now I'm wondering if he's right and I was wrong to engage and say what I did. Am I the jerk? I definitely don't think OP's the jerk here. The bottom line is the mother-in-law is prying way too much into a situation that OP is saying, please don't. This is not her battle to fight. If OP's saying don't, leave it alone, she should respect that. I definitely understand why you would take a break from them. Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my mother-in-law that baby showers are for moms, not grandmas, over a dress? I, 29-year-old female, am expecting my first in spring this year. My family, including my mother-in-law, 53-year-old female, are throwing me a baby shower with all my friends and close family. As she's part of the party planning committee, my mother-in-law knew the theme beforehand and bought an over-the-top dress, basically a gown, for herself to wear to the baby shower before I did. I recently showed her the dress I had purchased and it's basically a shorter and less fancy version of her dress. I told her that for a house, her dress might be a little too much and that my mom and other guests were wearing something more simple. She keeps responding with, it's not that fancy, and then indirectly told her that her dress is too much because it's fancier than mine. She keeps dismissing my feelings, so I straight up said that baby showers are for moms, not grandmas. Am I the jerk and am I overreacting over a dress? My family is split between her side and my side. Side note, my mother-in-law is a lovely person and we normally get along, but she definitely has first-person energy and loves going over the top for everything, including gifts that she gives me and my husband. I know she's not doing this to be manipulative or mean, but I can't help but be bothered that she'll be upstaging me for my own baby shower. I think there's a certain level of decorum you have to bring and I think that includes clothing choices. I just don't understand why the mother-in-law is shooting for the moon for a baby shower that isn't even their baby shower. If somebody's being excessive, I don't blame somebody for feeling like they're being excessive. This next story is, am I the jerk for saying to my sister, our jobs aren't the same? Last night my sister and I went to a dinner party to catch up with friends. 
We went to the same school together. My friends were her friend's younger siblings. Before COVID-19 happened, we hadn't seen each other for at least two years and COVID happened, so it's been five years since we all saw each other. A lot has changed. Many of us have graduated and have full-time jobs. Many have gone on to start a PhD and so on. My sister works at a high school as an English teacher, whereas I work at a university as a university research lecturer. My sister spends 80% of her time working hours teaching, the other 20% of the time is spent marking and doing admin. During dinner, a friend of hers asked me what I was up to now. Before I got the chance to answer, my sister butted in, saying she's got the same job as me. She teaches. At this point I said no, we don't have the same job. I corrected the fact that she works as a teacher at a secondary school. I work at a university and I only spend 10 hours a week teaching. The rest is spent researching my field of work, coming up with new project proposals, publishing and much more. I do admit that I have an attitude problem but I don't know why. Most of the time anything I say comes out in a rude tone even though I don't mean it to. I immediately apologized for giving a rude attitude as it genuinely wasn't meant to happen. However, I didn't apologize for correcting my sister. We had dinner and went home. I noticed my sister was in a mood whilst dropping her off back to her place. This morning, I woke up to a message from my sister which was a paragraph, calling me a jerk for looking down upon her job and being downright rude. I sent a message back saying, I know my attitude came off rude, but I apologized for it straight away when I noticed. I said, I don't look down upon you because you're a teacher. I won't apologize for correcting you and saying our jobs are different. You are a teacher, and most of your hours are spent teaching. The rest is spent marking and doing admin tasks. Mine is spent teaching, marking, doing admin, creating research proposals, helping in projects, publishing, and much more. She is still mad at me. Was I in the wrong? As OP described it, their reaction definitely left some things to be desired. But I definitely do get the gist of what OP is saying. If you do a job that's so much more than just teaching, you definitely feel slighted when it's just kind of boiled down and simplified and equated to somebody that isn't actually doing all that you would do. Our next story is, am I the jerk for asking my dad to think of our grief of our mom when planning his wedding to new fiance? Two years ago, my mom died from cancer. She was very young, in her late 50s. My parents were married and happy. Of course, it was so hard for all of us. In under a year, he met a new woman and then months later announced they're engaged. It's a short engagement, about 8-9 to months from getting engaged till the actual wedding. I do understand a lot of people, seemingly more widowed men from stories others have told me, find someone very quickly and often be remarried before a year even. So I'm trying not to be naive here. For my siblings and I, it's been a little strange as for us we're still processing the death of our mother. But also the new fiancé is only a few years older than me and my sister who are the eldest. We've tried our best to make an effort to be happy for him and be welcoming to her, all while processing our grief. My issue is he's so wrapped up with his new fiancé that he's forgotten we are still grieving. To the point that on the two year anniversary of our mum's death, Three of us got their wedding invite in the post, while the others the day after. It hurt all of us that they didn't think about this date in the days or week leading up to it, but I decided to leave it as I didn't want to taint their joy. He sent a message to my grandma, my mum's mum, out of the blue after no contact since the funeral. I was with my grandma at the time, asking for their address so he could send them an invite the day after the anniversary. Hence, we were with my grandparents to support each other. Not asking how they were at this time, how they were coping with the loss of their daughter, whether they'd be okay with an invite, just stating that they were being invited and he needed their address. My dear grandma said she'd like to attend for our sake, though my granddad refused point blank and was too upset to talk further. A month later, me and my sisters were addressed to the Hindu WhatsApp group, with all new fiancé's friends all now chatting excitedly and planning the hen. For us, that was another pang of heartache, as we were only in this position because our mom pretty recently died. Here's where I'm wondering if I'm the jerk. I sent my dad a message to say I'm happy for him but feel they've not thought about our grief and would have liked to be asked first before being added to a hen group, but most importantly, remember certain dates, i.e. the anniversary and not sending wedding invites in the days or week before this time. He replied saying, sorry I'm not being thoughtful enough. I'll make sure to check with you beforehand. 
Not. It might have been insensitive to send his kids wedding invites just before the anniversary. I said I don't want him to run everything by me, just remember we're grieving. Then he blamed the post and said it wasn't their fault it arrived on the day. Now I think he's avoiding me. So, am I the jerk for putting a dampener on their wedding by highlighting our grief? So, personally, and I don't think OP's gonna want to hear this, but I think OP's the jerk here. I think in a two-year span, it is perfectly reasonable for somebody to move on and get engaged to another partner. If anything, it was his anniversary. How are they going to try two years after she's gone to gatekeep a time frame that the guy directly has everything to do with? Am I being cold and callous here? I see people in the comments saying that OP obviously can't lean on their dad because they're speedrunning dating. Is getting engaged two years after your last partner passed away speedrunning? I feel like OP was being very ambiguous with the time frame here too. They said in under a year he met a new woman, and then months later announced they're engaged. If OP wants to be specific about dates, what is months later? Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying, oh it's been two years, OP should just get over it and not be bothered by any of this. But I feel like OP should understand if other people have moved on and aren't trying to be saddled down by time frame constraints. I mean, I'm willing to believe the male thing was just a total accident, they didn't mean any harm by it. I'm just left scrolling through the comments and everybody is so overwhelmingly on the opposite side of what I'm saying. I'm just left feeling like I'm about to get roasted alive, am I the jerk? Our next story is, am I the jerk for not telling my former fiance I bought her dream house? 10 years ago, my fiance left me, 38 year old male, a few weeks before our wedding. We grew up in a small town. We were friendly, went to the same school, but we never were in the same clique. She was one of the popular kids and I wasn't. A few years after college, I moved back home when my dad got sick. I found a job in my field about 45 minutes away from home. I would help take my dad to his chemo appointments. It was during one of those appointments I ran into X. She was now a worker at the hospital. One day while waiting, I asked her out. It turned out we shared a lot of the same interests. It seemed like our relationship was going great. About a year or so into dating, X and I moved into a rented house together. The following year, I proposed. We began looking for a house. X always wanted to live in her grandparents' house on the lake near our town. Her family was forced to sell the house when her grandparents died because of an inheritance dispute. Six months before our wedding, a chance event happened. The couple who bought her grandparents' lake house had grown tired of our snowy winters. It took some work and nearly all of my savings, but I was able to buy her dream house. It was going to be my surprise wedding present, so I didn't dare tell her or anyone in her family my plans. A month before our wedding, X and her friends went to Miami for her bachelorette party. I'm not sure of what all happened there, part of me doesn't really want to know, but I do know her high school boyfriend was there. When she got back from the trip, she broke down and confessed she was afraid to get married and wanted to call it off. It was a mess. She later moved to Florida and eventually married high school boyfriend. I ended up moving back to the city for an amazing job. In the meantime, I still had the lake house. With the help of my mom and dad, we started to fix up the lake house. It took a few years. My mom and dad would look after the contractors while I was in the city. Having the house was perfect when everything locked down. I was able to escape the city and work remotely from the lake house. I now live here full time and work remotely. This summer, we had 4th of July at the lake house. My sister-in-law used photos from the lake this summer in her Christmas card. One of those cards made it to X's cousin. The cousin recognized the house. The Saturday before New Year's, X's mother and sister were at my front door. After pleasantries and answering their initial questions, they made an offer to buy it. I refused. They were not happy. A few days later, I got a long text from X. This was the first time in about nine years she has talked with me. She called me a butt for keeping this from her. Her family is blaming her for losing the house again. She then asked me to sell. I still have no intention to sell. Now her and her family are complaining on social media that this is some sort of revenge. Am I the jerk? I think OP is definitely not the jerk here. It's really unfortunate that things didn't work out the way OP intended. But hey, they put time and money and effort into that lake house. And especially after all these years, it's completely theirs to do whatever they want with. Our next story is, am I the jerk for not agreeing with my wife's seemingly random prohibitions for my nieces when they visit? 
My wife, 24-year-old female, and I, 26-year-old male, got into an argument because she didn't think the way I spend time with my niece was acceptable. Context, I lived with my sister since my niece, 11-year-old female, was born. Last year, I moved out on my own, and in the same year, I got married to my wife. Because of the rapid shift in life and work becoming more busy than ever, I haven't had the time or energy to make time for that part of my family. Recently, I made time to invite my niece over. No plans, just for her to come over and hang out with my wife and I. After picking her up on the way home, she talked about wanting to build a snowman and a bunch of other things we thought would be fun. After getting home, my wife says that while niece and I go out to play in the snow, she'll finish some chores around the house. Before going out, niece sees my VR headset and shows interest, so I offer to let her play it before going outside. She says yes, so I start it up and she starts playing. Five minutes pass and my wife comes into the room and asks why we aren't outside yet. I tell her that niece wanted to play VR first, so I let her. Wife gets upset, saying video games isn't quality time. I respond with, we're spending time together and niece is having fun, so why does it matter? Wife storms off. Soon after, niece and I do go out and make a couple of snowmen and snow angles, etc. And after playing in the snow for 30-ish minutes, niece asks to play VR again. I say yes and she skips away to play VR in the living room. We switch back and forth trying to beat each other's score and Beat Saber and stuff like that. Fast forward, I drop niece back off at home and come back home and my wife has a list made out for me when I walk back into the door. It's a list of things that our young guests aren't allowed to do while at our house. And on the list is no playing video games amongst other seemingly arbitrary prohibitions. I say, the list is not necessary because when I bring my family or friends over, I'm going to do what we enjoy. She says, that's no way to spend time with kids. Doing nothing but playing video games. I like doing crafts and playing board games and other things with my siblings when they come over. Why can't you do the same? I respond, because we weren't raised doing those things, so I didn't think to do those things. But if you offered to try some of that stuff while she was here, I would have obliged. But I'm not going to accept a list of prohibitions because you don't like our version of fun. The argument escalated and I maybe sort of said some mean things like, you're too narrow-minded and dull to accept that things other than what you like are fun. Okay, so OP's definitely the jerk for that last line that's just unnecessary. You don't gotta go all the way to saying, well, you're just too narrow-minded and dull. On the other half, the partner is also a jerk for trying to put this ridiculous prohibition thing. There's nothing wrong with having your niece come over and play with the VR headset or playing video games. I think if you can have a friend or relative come over and you guys can sit down and play video games together, that's great bonding time. I don't think you can get enough co-op experiences like that in video games. I mean, just think about how many countless people in the world say some of their childhood memories they enjoy would be looking back to when they played Mario Kart with some relatives or something like that. Shoot, I'll have family come over and I'll play Monopoly with them? On the Switch. I'd really like to know what OP's partner thinks of that loophole. Our next story is, am I the jerk for not paying attention to the kids at my niece's for birthday party when the other adults left the room without making me aware that I'll be alone with the seven kids, which resulted in an injured kid? I, 35-year-old female, love kids always worked in childcare jobs. During gatherings of friends or family, I somehow always ended up in the kids' room, helping the birthday boy and his friends assemble the new Playmobil Fortress, because he asked me for help or something like that, while the other adults eat cake around a table. Nothing wrong with them, I just always wonder how I got myself sitting on the floor, surrounded by tiny humans. But lately my health took a nosedive, burnout and other stuff. I'm no longer good with noise and crowds or focus. I'm on disability because I can't work. My family knows this. When my niece had her birthday, I was invited but I had a really, really bad day. I knew their apartment would be too crowded and noisy for me during the party, so I told my brother I had to cancel and come the day after. Discussing the reason, my brother convinced me to still come over for a little while, eat some cake, and hug the birthday girl. To show up and not disappoint her. I made my limitations clear, that I can't help and that I might zone out. He said it would be no problem. When I came over, I sang happy birthday with them all, gave my niece her birthday hug and gift, and sat myself in the living room with them, eating cake. The kids were playing, I didn't know the guests' parents. 
It was as overwhelming as I suspected, so I stuck to my piece of cake and zoned out a little. I don't know how much time had passed, but the next thing I knew was that there was a scream for my niece, and when I looked up, there were no more adults around. My niece had fallen down from a bar stool she had climbed and had a bloody knee. Nothing more serious, luckily. When I got to her, the other adults rushed in from the balcony a room over. My niece got checked over, got a band-aid, and was already playing again five minutes after. But my brother asked me what happened and why I didn't prevent her from climbing. And when I told him I zoned out, he got angry and blamed me for her accident. It's a few days later now and I got several messages and calls from family. How irresponsible and jerky I am because I was not paying attention to the kids. I thought it wasn't my fault because I wasn't made aware that I was the only adult left in the room, but I'm beginning to doubt my point of view. Am I the jerk here? I mean, it would maybe be one thing if everybody was stepping out and somebody said, hey, just try to keep an eye on the kids for a second while I'm stepping out. But nobody made anything aware for OP and OP was in their own kind of bubble, their own little world. Definitely not OP's fault. This next story is... Am I the jerk for telling my mom her husband went to his family to pressure me into asking him to be father of the bride for my wedding? When I got engaged, I, 24-year-old female, asked my mom if she would walk me down the aisle and have a mother-daughter dance during my reception. She enthusiastically said yes. We told my stepdad and he said he was happy for my mom. He and my mom started dating when I was 6. He moved in when I was 9 and they got married when I was 10. When mom first started dating him, she sat me down and told me he wasn't ever going to replace dad, and that if he ever pressured me to do something I was uncomfortable with, like call him dad, I could tell her, and she would nip it in the bud. She made it clear our relationship didn't have to fit anyone else's mold, and she reminded me of this again when he moved in, and when they got married. She also asked for my feelings on things every step of the way, and I liked my stepdad and cared about him, so it was easy to agree to him moving in and to them getting married. I never called him dad or really thought of him as a dad figure. He was something different, and it wasn't nothing, but I'm not sure I'd have a word to describe it. But we got along great. It was just never the same as my relationship with my mom. I always dreamed of mom walking me down the aisle and dancing with me at my wedding. She was there and always put me first and we were our own team. But she also loved and never let him be just a piece of history I never knew anything about. I always appreciated that and her efforts to keep me involved in his family. Or the good parts anyway. A few weeks ago, my stepdad's parents texted me with a weird comment about father of the brides needing a little extra detail to go into their wedding suit. It came out of nowhere and I didn't reply because I honestly had no idea what it was about really. A few days after that I saw them and they asked why he wasn't in the rehearsal for our father-daughter dance. I told them that there was nothing to rehearse and my mom was dancing with me. I said my stepdad and I would dance at a different point on the day. They said the father of the bride is the dance, not mother of the bride. I told them he wasn't going to have that traditional role. Another day then, they mentioned it to me and I asked them why they kept bringing it up. They said I should be ashamed, and I humiliated my stepdad, and he was so upset that he went to them. I spoke to my stepdad, and he confirmed he went to his parents with the hope I would see the error of my ways, and he didn't want to upset mom by saying something directly. But he told me he deserved to be father of the bride and not stepfather of the bride. I told my mom what he did, and she was furious. Of course, my stepdad was upset with me, but his parents were ticked and told me I ran to my mommy like a little girl instead of a woman. Am I the jerk? OP's definitely not the jerk here. They're clearly not respecting OP's boundaries. I think that's the bottom line. My question is, now at this point, are they willing to torch any goodwill and relationship they've built up with OP over the years over this? Our next story is, am I the jerk for not buying snacks for my daughter's best friend at a playdate? I have an 11 year old daughter, Ellie. She has a best friend, Sophie, 12. Both of the girls have special needs and are around 6 years old mentally. Sophie's mom called me yesterday, said that they were at an indoor playground and Sophie wanted to know if Ellie could come and play. Sophie's mom offered to put me on her punch card. She prepays for 10 to 20 visits at a time because it's cheaper, so it would be free for me. So I got Ellie in the car and we met them at the playground. After about an hour of playing, the girls started to get hungry. I packed a snack for Ellie, but Sophie's mom didn't have any snacks on her. 
I told her they sell snacks in the front, but she claimed that she didn't have any money on her and asked me to buy Sophie some goldfish. I said, sure, Venmo me and I'll grab some. I said, no, I took care of my kid and it's not my job to take care of hers too. She says she paid for my kid to get in so I could cover the $2 for the goldfish. I told her if she wanted me to bring snacks, she should have told me when she invited me, but I won't be wasting $2 for a 50 cent bag of goldfish because she was unprepared. She went up to the front and I don't know if she lied about not having money, but she came back with goldfish and fruit snacks. Now she's being petty by asking me to pay her back for all of the times we've used their memberships and guest passes, so we're not getting along. I'm going to have to see her at school drop off and pick up, ballet class, gymnastics class, and the girls' weekly playdates. So I wanted to know if I was the jerk for not buying her kid a snack. I mean, when it ultimately comes down to $2 and they also did get you and your kid in for free, I think unless you're in a dire financial situation, it's a bit much to be so, I guess, uptight about $2? OP even mentioned that the friend paid multiple times for OP's daughter's entrance fees. They gave OP some perks a number of times and OP blew that all up for $2. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another crazy Am I the Jerk here story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.